John 56-28 over Drake. The store, score was a little misleading because the game was much more competitive, especially in that first half. But let's start right away. And I thought that right off the bat, your offensive line provided some great protection early on in that game for Taron Christian. I would agree. Um, Taron had uh, a, a lot of time to find a receiver. They gave us a different look coverage-wise. You know, they tried to um, take Jake Winicky out of the game, which they, they did a nice job of their, their game plan. Uh, but I really thought all phases of our game started out uh, that game uh, on edge and, and really were performing at top uh, at, at a top level. You mentioned Jake Winicky. I was reminded of the criticism that Chris Carter used to get when he was with the Eagles before he joined the Vikings, that all he does is catch touchdowns. Well, in this game, all Jake did was catch touchdowns. Yeah, he, uh, um, you know, down by the goal line, you get one-on-one coverage most of the time, and uh, that's a, that's not an easy throw, but it's, He's a big target against sometimes a little corner. And uh, out on the field, they, they double-covered him. And uh, Taron and our offensive coordinator uh, were smart enough to throw to the open guy. That's what we should be doing. And Taron showed time and time again how much his ability to work with his legs really makes a defense have to stay honest against the, your offense. Yeah, he, he did a nice job. He, he, uh, he's so mature. And so that allows him to make decisions, the right decision, when you make the right decision, you have athletic ability like he has. Uh, most of the time, really good things are going to happen. John, you and I have talked a lot over the years about dealing with adversity and how uh, the character of a team a lot of times is revealed when the team has to deal with things not going their way. There's a flip side of that. Sometimes there's dealing with success, and that can bring some challenges as well. And It, it seemed like uh, watching the team and also listening to some of your comments that the team struggled a little bit being successful early against Drake. Well, we were we were so near perfect. It was scary. I mean, after 11 minutes and 48 seconds, we had 21 points, 192 yards, no penalties, uh, and in the same same time span, they had four total yards and uh, uh, no points and two penalties. And so, to play at that level against any opponent, it takes a, a, a huge effort in terms of mental focus and so on. But I do, I, knew, I do know this. We can do it because we started the game like that. You knew Sauber, their receiver tight end, was going to be tough to defend. And, and, boy, they got him the ball a few times, and he is tough to defend, isn't he? He is. He's a, he's a really good player. He, for as big as he is, he's, he's a, he runs really well. He's smooth. He has great hands. Uh, I really think, you know, uh, Dallas Goddard and, and him being on the same field, those are two really <laughs> special tight ends. I thought Brady Mangarelli had a really nice run that really kind of jump-started that intensity and got things back and set up Jake's third touchdown catch. He did. And, you know, it was a power read, and, uh, you know, we missed blocked it. We, we had two guys blocked the same guy, and so there a guy, guy had a shot at Brady early, and he, he spun out of it and had a nice long run down to the three-yard line. And, and any big play, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a team that, uh, that uh, you know, feeds on energy, which we are, any big play should energize your team. Speaking of Brady, he made a heads-up play on special teams, was lucky to get a, a short kickoff. Well, we, that, that, was a, that was a miscue on our front line. You know, anytime they lob it, kick it short, we make a call. Our front line is supposed to attack their line, and one of our guys came back and caused a fumble or a mishandling of the kickoff, and Brady ended up having to jump on it and then get jumped on by about uh, 5,000 pounds. <laughs> But uh, uh, it was a big play in the game because it was it kept us uh, it kept them away from a really short field. And the defense, your, your defense really stepped up in that second half with three uh, interceptions, including the one Jared Bloom just made an incredible athletic play on that one to catch the ball falling down, make sure his knee doesn't touch, and go into the end zone for a pick six. Yeah, it was uh, it was a, a big play. Um, you know, a, a hard pass to catch because he caught it one handed. And then was able to get his body in the end zone, and and uh, um, it big, and that was a big play in the football game because not only was it an interception, it turned into instant points. You also gave up a touchdown on a kick return later, and it's, you could say, "Well, the game was getting out of hand at that point, or whatever." But I know as a coach, you are never happy when stuff like that happens. No, and that goes back to being mentally focused and mentally tough. And we talk about it all the time how. Oh, it isn't your legs that win you or lose you a game. It's your focus, your ability to slow the game down. And that was just 11 guys running down the field thinking somebody else is going to make the play. And those guys were uh, returning the kick saying, let's return this this thing as far as we can and 
Consequently, it was uh, it was a touchdown. Speaking of your special teams, though, a great moment on your punt coverage team with uh, Cody Hazlett getting the block there, and then uh, Jake Harms uh, taking it in for a touchdown. Yeah, huge play, great design by Coach Jackson, our uh, punt block uh, coach, and uh, you know that, that was a solid block because he he almost uh, was hitting the punter as he blocked it with his torso. And then we were lucky enough to pick it up and get it in the end zone. And, and again, in a close game, that has a huge impact. In this game, again, it keep, kept us uh, fired up and excited. You mentioned Dallas Goddard earlier, and not just the folks at Dana Jaikow Stadium, but also people around the country getting a good look at Dallas's one-hand grab, almost going out of bounds there in the end zone. What an amazing catch. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a very talented, athletic uh, tight end. Uh, has really good skill, ball skills and so on. And uh, I'm still amazed when I watch that, he, that he never really brought it into his body, even with one hand. Caught it with one hand, had it dangling out there, and got his feet and hand in the, in, in the turf. And uh, it just it, it proves that uh, the type of athlete he is. Yeah, I was going to say, Coach Otzelberger might be taking a look at that, that one-handed palming of the football going to the ground there. That He could get some rebounds for the Jackrabbit basketball team playing like that. Yeah, I watched him play basketball in high school, and he can get a lot of rebounds. <laughs> All right, so, John, after one game now at the new stadium, how was it different from the times that you had practiced in there? What was the feel? What was the turf like? What was the wind conditions like? What were your overall assessments after an actual game in there? Well, the the it's just so different when you really have the game or a game. You know, and part of it is, uh, this game will be a little different than the Drake game, our, our upcoming game, because it isn't the first one. Mm-hmm. It isn't the first time we walked down there, out in it, and there's 15,000 people there. So, uh, you know, it's all about maturing and, and so on. But Saturday night against Drake was a special memory. It was a special game. It was a special tribute to uh, the Dykhaus family and all those people that, that stepped up. And, and uh, we're part of history, so that's kind of fun to be part of. Second of three straight home games. Now you get Cal Poly coming up on Saturday night, a team you know well from your Great West Conference days against them, and a team that's going to show a little wrinkle on offense, something you're not going to see the rest of the year, the triple option. It gives us a chance to talk, John, about something we don't talk about much, which is your scout team. And for people out there that don't understand, there's a group of guys on your team that do nothing during practice except run what the opposing team is going to run that week, and they've really got to do a good job to get your units ready for what they're going to see that coming game. Yeah, and, and uh, you know when you're when you're facing an I team or a spread team, the things you do over and over, it's so much easier. But this this uh, offense that Polly runs, a triple option, all timing, all reads, uh, three phases. That's impossible to master as a scout team. But ideally, it's possible for us to master our defense to defend it because that, that's what we're really trying to do out of this week is get really turn our hats around, uh, look at film differently, and just change our techniques and, and get ready to defend the triple option. And the triple option, the key there is the quarterback, and Dano Graves is a transfer from the Air Force Academy, didn't play last year. He actually chose his red shirt for his uh, junior year. But he threw a couple of touchdown passes against San Diego, ran for one. They went over 350 yards on the ground, and it all starts with that decision-making at quarterback. He's a he's a uh, tremendous player. Uh, You know, he's a seasoned player. You know, when you when you face a a team with a quarterback that the game's moving slow and it's triple option, I mean, it's going to boil down to one guy tackling the dive, one guy being in position on the quarterback, one guy being in the alley, one guy being in pitch. And everybody else pursuing their, their, you know, what's left of, uh, you know, after taking care of their techniques. So they've got it perfected. They run at full speed. They do a great job of it. Uh, they control the clock with the run game. And so we just, we got to come out and do our job and and uh, and make them earn their yards and not make a mistake on the opposite. You don't talk about patience a lot in a football game, especially on the defensive side. But this really is an occasion where patience really needs to be a key on that defensive end. Yeah, you know, you, you you have to just keep doing your job. And, again, their fullback averages, I think, 5.6 yards a carry, something like that. So, I mean, if, if they just hand the ball to him and on average, you don't stop him. So we got to understand that he's going to get six sometimes. He may get 12. Let's keep it two sometimes. Let's hit him in the backfield sometimes. We'll just try to eliminate part of their phase uh, by, by, by uh, our guys doing a good job and see what happens. 
really stingy on defense, Cal Poly, and it seems like just from looking at their numbers and looking at overall, it just seems like they have a real team approach to how they play defense. They do a nice job. Again, it's a different look than we see, and so our offense also has to be preparing for an odd front that gives you some unique looks. Um, they do a nice job. They understand it, again, and, and they're able to execute it. They play full speed. They've got some really good players. Um, you know, ideally, you know, our game plan will, will match up and we'll be able to get some yards and, and cause I know they're going to try to control the ball with the running game on, on, on their offense. Two games in John, how's the overall health of the team? It's really, really pretty good. Uh, Nick Mears is still out. It will be for a while. Uh, Shane Godlob is real close to being back and that's really it. That's really the guys that uh, we have, have missed some games. Obviously, you want to win every game, but the last game before the conference schedule, do you feel like there's some things you really need to shore up before you kick it off in the Missouri Valley next week, a week after? Well, I would, I would hope we'd get a better pass rush when you talk about shoring something up, but you're not going to get a better pass rush against an option team. Mm-hmm. They average 10 passes a game, so that's, <laughs> yeah, we're not even working that. Um, in terms of uh, just fundamentals, uh, we need to be better tacklers. We need to be better tacklers in the open field where we grab cloth and don't let the guy go. And then uh, on offense, just executing, mo- uh, taking care of movements. Uh, we struggle a little bit against Drake when they moved, they twisted. We have to be able to take our steps and pick up what's there.